Bibles this morning, would like to ask you to please turn to 1 John. If you don't have your Bible, please get a Bible in the pew and uh, read and follow in God's Holy Word as we read and study from the Scriptures. Uh, 1 John chapter 4. 1 John chapter 4, we'll be looking at verses 7 through 11. 1 John chapter 4, verses 7 through 11. We've been trying to study about things that we ought to do. Things that God says that we ought to do. Now when God says you ought to do something, it's not optional other than the fact that if you don't do it, you're going to experience the judgments of God. And when you do what God says that you ought to do, then God will bless your life and be with you and help you in other areas of your life. So we've been studying about what God says we ought to do. The Word of God tells us that the children of Issachar were men who had understanding of the times and knew what Israel ought to do. That's in 1 Chronicles chapter 12 and verse 32. That they knew what Israel ought to do and they taught Israel. The men of Issachar who had an understanding of the times and knew what Israel ought to do, they taught Israel what they ought to do. In the last three or four weeks, that's what we've been looking at, so that we can be like the men of Issachar, that we can know what we ought to do. We can know what God says that we ought to do, and then that we can do what God says we ought to do, and that we, like the men of Issachar, that we can teach others what God says that we ought to do. Peter tells us something that we ought to do when he says that men ought to obey God rather than men. Very important that we learn to do that. That we obey God. Men ought to obey God rather than men. The Apostle Paul said, we then that are strong ought to to bear the infirmities of the weak. We ought to be helping those that are less fortunate than we are in all different kinds of ways. We that are strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak. Jesus tells us something we ought to do when he says, Men ought always to pray and not to faint. That's something that we ought to do. We need to pray. Every day we need to be praying that God will help us and that God would be with us. The scripture tells us that we ought to walk and to please God. And the scripture also says that we ought to walk even as he walked. You talk about walking, you're talking about going forward, you're talking about being active and we need to be active in our service to God. We ought to walk even as Jesus walked. We ought to follow in the footsteps of Jesus. This past Wednesday night we studied from Hebrews chapter Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 1 where the word of God says that we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things that we have heard lest at any time we should let them slip. We ought to listen to what God's word has to say uh, and if we're not careful, the word of God will slip away from us and the devil will take the word of God out of our hearts. Jesus taught that in a parable in Luke chapter 8. And this morning we're going to be looking at 1 John chapter 4 beginning in verse 7. I'll read verses 7 through 11 and looking at something else that God says we ought to do. 1 John chapter 4 beginning in verse 7, the word of God says, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God, and knoweth God. He that loveth not, knoweth not God, for God is love. And this was manifested, the love of God, toward us, because that God sent his only begotten Son into the world, that we might live through him. Hearing his love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. Listen carefully now to verse 11. 
Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. And that's something God says we ought to do. We ought to love one another. But the premise that he gives for us loving one another, he says, Beloved, if God so loved us. Look at the love of God. Think about the love of God. Think about all the ways that God has shown his love. If you were to identify the greatest way that God has ever shown his love, I would hope that one of the things that you would think about is that God sent his only begotten son into this earth to save us from our sins. In fact, if you look at the two previous verses, when he says, Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. In verse 9 he says, And this was manifested, this way God showed his love, and this was manifested the love of God because that God sent his only begotten Son into the world that we might live through him. Here in his love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. So in verses 9 and 10, God tells us about the love of God. He tells us about the greatest way that God has ever manifested his love is that God sent his only begotten son into the earth to save us from our sins. Everybody in this room, and I'm sure most all people that claim to be Christians, they know John 3.16, which is again talking about how much God loved us. For God so loved, so loved. You know, this verse says, Beloved, if God so loved us, and John 3.16 says, So loved, so loved, the magnitude of the love of God cannot be comprehended in this world. If God so loved the world, and God did so love the world, and if God so loved us, and if God has commended his love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. God has shown his love. The Father showed his love by sending his only begotten Son. Jesus has shown us his love by giving his life. Though he was rich, yet for our sakes he became poor, that we through his poverty might be rich. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, they show their love, they manifest their love, they do things. And, and, and as you study the Word of God, you're going to find that the word love is not just a feeling in the heart, but it's doing something to, it's an active verb. We're going to show love. That's what God did. God showed his love. And I'm glad that nothing can separate us from the love of God. We're mortal creatures and sometimes we stop loving people. I know people say you can't stop loving somebody you want to love. I believe you can. I believe you can love people and then stop loving people. I believe that we as a people of God sometimes we do stop loving people. But we ought not to stop loving people. We ought to keep on loving people. Brotherly love ought to continue. It ought to keep on going. So we as the people of God are taught here in 1 John chapter 4 and verse 11. He's saying, Beloved, if God so loved us, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. Do you, do you really love one another? Do you really love one another? Do you love one another in your home? Let me say this, if you don't love, if you're not manifesting love in the home, if love is not abounding in your home, then you're not a Christian. You cannot be a Christian just by going to church and by knowing scriptures and reading the word of God. If you're not loving in the home, if you're not showing love in the home, if husbands are not showing the love for their wives, and wives are not showing love for the children, and the children are not showing love for the parents, and the parents for the children, if we're not loving one another in the family, then we don't really understand the love of God. And you might say, well, 
You don't know about my spouse. Let me tell you something. You don't know how bad you are either. And you're hard to love. And everybody in this building is hard to love. Some are harder to love than other people. But I'll tell you what, brethren, there's nobody in this building that deserves the love of God. And if we don't deserve the love that God has for us, and God loves us anyway, in spite of our shortcomings, we ought to love one another in spite of one another's shortcomings. We ought not to stop loving one another. Back up in the Bible, just to 1 John chapter 3. 1 John chapter 3 and verse 14. 1 John chapter 3 and verse 14 says, We know that we have passed from death into life because we love the brethren. That's the way you can tell if you're a child of God, if you love. Not just love people that, you, that love you. Not just love people that are doing things for you. But you love people in spite of themselves. In spite of what they're doing. You love them anyway. Isn't that what God does? Do you deserve the love of God? Do you, love, do you deserve for God to still love you today? Now if you don't deserve for God to still love you. And you don't deserve for God to forgive you. And yet you keep asking God to forgive you. And you keep asking God to love you. If God so loved us, we ought also to love, really love, manifest love one to another. Look at 1 John chapter 3 verse 16. He again tells us, he's going to tell us to love one another, but what does he, what does he do? But what's the foundation that he gives? What's the reason he gives for us to love one another? Because God loves you. If God loves you, you ought to love one another. I asked somebody this past Sunday, I think, or maybe last Wednesday night. He came out, and as he came out the front door, I said, why do you come to church? Oh, Brother David's got a big frown and said, why in the world would you ask somebody that? <laughs> and when I said that, I think to my wife or somebody else this week, I said, you know, I asked this person, why do they come to church? And they said, I don't think you ought to ask them that. But I felt strongly, all during the service, I think it was Wednesday night, I'm not sure. But all during the service, I just had this man profoundly on my mind and I kept thinking, it's amazing that this man comes and comes, doesn't have a wife, but comes. That's unusual for a man now, to be faithful to God, be faithful in God's house. You know what he told me whenever he went out and I asked him, why do you come to church? He said, because God has been so good to me. That's a good reason now. That's a good reason. You know what he's conscious of? You know what he's thinking about? The love of God. The love of God is greater far than tongue or pen can ever tell. And when you know and when you realize and when you're thinking about the fact that you do not, you do not, you, I, we do not deserve the love of God. And yet God is loving us in so many ways, above all that he gave his only begotten son for us. But that's not all he did. He's loving us by taking care of us every day. We can say like David of old, the Lord is what? The, well, the Lord is good. He said that. But he said in Psalm 23, 1, what did he say? The Lord is my shepherd. My shepherd. Now he's my savior. But I'm glad to know that God loves me not just because he saw I was a sinner. I needed to be saved eternally. But I'm glad to know that he loved me so much that he saw why this poor person is going to need help every day in his life. And I'm going to be his shepherd. And I'm going to be his friend. And I'm going to be his elder brother. And I'm going to be his guide. And I'm going to guide him and direct him and feed him. And so every day of my life, you know what God has been doing to me? God has been, what's the word? Loving me. That's right. God has been loving me every day of my life. Where did I get my wife? 
A gift from God. Where did I get my children? A gift from God. Where did I get my parents? How did I have the wonderful parents I had? A gift from God. How do I have a wonderful sister that loves me anyway? Uh, it's the love of God. Well, there are a lot of people doing that. Yeah, well, uh, she is an amazing person. She is. Love in the family is a great blessing. And when you look at the love of God and you realize I'm a part, we're a part of the family of God because God chose us and God saved us and God is helping us and that nothing can separate us from the love of God. That's the kind of love I ought to have in my heart for you and for one another is that that love is not going to stop. You might have rough times, you might have difficult times, but the love is not going to stop. And it's not only going to stop just being a feeling in your heart, the love is not going to stop being manifest, going to show love. If God so loved us, we ought also to what? Um, love one another. Love one another. Um, Back up to verse 16. We're in 1 John three sixteen. Hereby perceive we the love of God, because he laid down his life for us. There's the principle. There's the foundation. There's the example. He laid down his life for us. Here's how you see the love of God. He laid down his life for us. And we ought. Oh, there's another all, didn't it? And we haven't touched on this one yet. And we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. That's the way we ought. To love one another is that we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. When you get home in the evening and you're tired, what do you want to do? Sit in a chair and take it easy. But you know one thing you ought to do is get out and go see somebody in the nursing home and the sick and those that stand in special need. There's lots of people that need attention. If God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. This is the way you see the love of God. He laid down his life for us. And we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. Verse 18. This is a very important principle and key about loving one another. 1 John chapter 3 and verse 18. The word of God says, My little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. You want to say, I love you to your spouse? Wash the dishes, clean the floor, do things around the house, and she'll know what you're saying. You don't have to say it with your mouth. You ought to say it with your mouth, but you ought to do things to show them you love them. I talk more about love than I show love. And these words are to me. Let us not just love in word and in tongue. Don't just say, I love you, but in deed and in truth. Do something. Good deeds. Do something. I want to tell every husband here, you need to do something to show your love for your wife. Every wife here, do things every day. Not once a year. Mother's Day. Thank God for Mother's Day. But I'll tell you this, brethren, we ought to show love for our mothers a lot more than one. I thank God that I've got children that show love to their mother. I thank God for that. I thank God I've got grandchildren that show love for their grandmother. It means a lot to me to see them manifest that love. If God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. And don't just love in word and in tongue, but in deed and in truth. Show your love. Go with me back just a moment to Ephesians chapter 5. Back up to Ephesians chapter 5. The word of God, and we're not going to spend a lot of time here. You're familiar with these words, but I do want to remind every husband here. If God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. And the most important thing that every husband here has to do is to love God first and foremost, but to love your wife, love her in deed and in truth. In Ephesians chapter 5 verse 25, the word of God says, Husbands, 
Love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. You see what God's word does? <laughs> what does he do in uh, 1 John 4, 11? What does he do? If God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. Now he reverses it here, but he's saying the same thing. He says, husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. What's the principle? What's the perfect love? The love of God. What are you? You're children of God. Now, God is love. And if you're children of God, you ought to be showing love every day in your life. Love. We ought to love one another. It's a great joy in loving one another. It's a great joy to have the privilege to love one another. The scripture says it's more blessed to, I'm going to you fill in the blank here. This is a verse of scripture, I believe it's in Acts maybe 20 verse 35. It's, the scripture says that Jesus said it is more blessed to give than to receive. You know what your flesh wants? Your flesh wants to what? Receive. You know what a Christian does? Gives. It's more blessed. Jesus says, you will receive a greater blessing by giving than you will by receiving. You think you like to get a gift? I'll tell you what's even better is giving a gift. You like to be visited? You like for somebody to do something for you? You want to be even happier than that? Go do something for somebody else. Let us not love in word or in tongue, but in deed and in truth. If God so loved us, I'm glad he didn't just say I love you. You know, if God had just said, I love you, I would spend eternity in hell. If that's all he did was just say, I love you. He didn't just say, I love you. He showed his love. He sent his son. If all God did was just send his son and save me from my sins, and he didn't help me every day of my life, I couldn't make it in this world. I need Jesus every day. I need God's help every day of my life. And if God so loved me that he's helping me every day of my life, then what should we husbands be doing every day? Every day, do something for your wife. Every day. If we come to God's house and we don't change, if we don't do better, the scripture says it's better not to have known the way of righteousness than to know it and then not do it. It's, serious, it's a serious thing, husbands, for you to be able to quote and know all these scriptures about husbands loving your wives if you're not loving your wife. He says in verse 28, Ephesians 5, verse 28, he says, So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. Verse 33, Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love. There. God did what? What's the little two-letter word there? So love. God so loved us. Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife, even as himself and the wife see that she reverence her husband. And then chapter 6 starts in, Children, obey your parent. Children, honor your mother and father. Is that all about love right there? I love for my grandchildren and children, I love for them to hug me. But I like to see them do other things to show love. It's a blessing when children honor their, their parents and their grandparents. It's a blessing when they show respect. It's a blessing when they do things that you didn't ask them to do. They just do it because they love you. They come and they do things that you didn't even ask them to do because they love you. They're actively showing love. They know something about God loving them. They know something about their parents loving them. They know something about their grandparents loving them. And because they're loved, they want to do something to show love to their parents and grandparents. And that's a great blessing. You understand? Love and discipline are inseparable. This ideal, I love my children too much to spank him, that's a lie from the devil. 
If a parent loves their children, they're going to discipline the children. They're going to bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. They're going to be an example to them. They're going to teach them. They're going to instruct them. And they're going to spank them. They're going to whip them. If you don't believe that, please see me after church. I'll give you five scriptures real quick that tell you from God's Word exactly what God's Word says about parents that do not discipline their children. It's a very serious matter. You don't love them if you don't discipline them. The Bible says, whom the Lord loveth, he what? He chasteneth. Scripture says, Jesus says, a lot of people say, oh, that's the Old Testament God. Let me tell you something, God's the same yesterday, today, and forever. God does not change. Whom the Lord loved in the Old Testament, he chastened in the Old Testament. And whom the Lord loved in the New Testament, he chastened in the New Testament. And they say sometimes, well, I just like to read the words in red. I like to just read the words of Jesus. Well, I'll tell you what, let's turn to Revelation 3.19. And that says, as many as, that's Jesus speaking, red letters. Uh, Jesus said, as many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Jesus says love and discipline are inseparable. I thank God we've got some parents that know the truth that love and discipline are inseparable. Let me say one more thing in closing. Turn, uh, turn to Hebrews chapter 13 please. I mentioned this verse just a moment ago. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 1. I've been talking primarily about the love in the family, but I want you to know that uh, we as brothers and sisters in Christ, we ought to love one another. All of us in this building, we, we ought to really, really love one another. If God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. Uh, Hebrews chapter 13, look at verse 1. Very short verse, one of the shortest verses in the Bible. Let brotherly love continue. I want to, I'm going to make a commitment to every one of you. I will never stop loving anybody in this building. I will not stop loving you. You can turn away from me. You can leave me. You can be gone and me never see you again. You can leave this church. You can go the wrong path. But I won't stop loving you. And you'll have to leave me because I'm not going to walk away from you. Everybody hear what I just said? Let brotherly love what? Let it continue. That word continue means don't stop. It means keep on going. Is that what God did? Does God's love just keep on going? Does it continue? Now here's the difference in God's love and our love. Let brotherly love continue. My love for you ought to continue to grow. Not just continue as long as I live, but my love for you day by day ought to grow. Let brotherly love continue, keep on going, but let brotherly love keep on growing. And let brotherly love keep on spreading out to other people. My love for you has not stopped. My love for you is growing. And our love ought to be spreading out to other people. All of you in this church need to love each other, but you need to reach out and love other people. God's got a lot of special blessings for us when we follow his word. When we walk with the Lord in the light of his word, what a glory he sheds on our way. When we do his good will, he abides with us still. If God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. May God help us to love one another is my prayer for Christ.